Start the stream then. Oh yeah. Yeah. Call the meeting of the transportation committee to order. Uh, roll call. We are short a quorum. Um, Alderman Perkins and Alderman Schultz are not here, so we do not have a quorum at this time. Uh, therefore, unless J Mr. Schultz shows up, we can discuss some of the items on the agenda, but we can't take any action. Um, public comments. Oh, and we also have guests um, here as well. Alderman, older woman is here and staff. So, um, public comments, there isn't anyone I, here. Actually, I have a public comment uh, oh, I'd like okay. to make because there's no other uh, agenda item. So, um, just something for the committee to consider for the future. As you know, we, uh, the police station has hired an intern to help with parking downtown because parking has become, uh, a, it's a, a cyclic issue in which um, the merchants, uh, some merchants get upset when other merchants, employees park in the parking spaces in front of their businesses and now there's no parking available for their patrons. And uh, so this issue comes up nearly every year this year, the police have decided they would hire an intern to help create um, parking enforcement downtown. I think one of the things this committee needs to consider is a long-term solution for this because um, obviously we don't really have budget to add headcount for parking enforcement. So in the winter time, this becomes when there's no internship, it can become an issue or has been an issue. So I just want to present to the, the committee uh, to take an opportunity in the future to add this as an agenda item to brainstorm about ways we might uh, address this issue for the downtown district. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I just got a uh, text from Jay. He said he'll be here in 10 minutes. What? He said he'll be here in 10 minutes. Okay, well then, okay, good. Um, so, but it, you know, what would the solution be other than hiring? Well, I, I think there's an, a number of solutions that um, I and city staff can present to the committee for consideration. I don't expect you to make a decision in that meeting, but simply to discuss those uh, options that might be available to you as a long-term solution. So all I'm asking is that we create an agenda item for a future meeting to discuss it. I'd, I'd be curious if this is, I mean, a lot of small towns have the same kind of parking that we do, and what do, what do others do, I guess? Sure. There, there are, I've never even thought about it until, yeah. you, until you brought it up, and then it makes a lot of sense. Well, and, and as, you know, we're starting to see, we are starting to see some more investment in downtown. It's, it's going to become a bigger issue, especially as the city is trying to uh, create economic development in that area. So we really need to come up with a long-term solution. Um, and maybe it's a phased approach. I don't know, but you know, I think we could bring some ideas for the committee to consider and you guys can kind of discuss it and see what direction you might want to, to head. Okay, so we'll do that for the next meeting. Something else too? No, that's that's all I had. Talk about. I guess we could start the conversation on the bond and GW property. Just for informational purposes, public works. Uh, Public Works was working on fixing the uh, opening to the pavement on Brainerd and Johnson, and we uncovered a 100-plus-year-old uh, leaking underground storage tank. <coughs> so right now we are in the process of getting some quotes. Um, just to start with, it looks like it's going to be something in the neighborhood of fifteen to $20,000 to remove the tank and remediate. 
Um, we are unsure. Uh, I had the Office of the State Fire Marshal out, and we went through the buildings, uh, we went through the pet store, and through the motorcycle shop, and we found nothing other than, yep, they were probably tied to one of these two buildings at one point in time. Um, one tank looks to be filled with some sort of uh, heating oil, uh, maybe a third. They're each 750 gallons big. They're end-to-end -end about 25 feet long. And then the second one looks to be filled to the brim with uh, like a either a mixed oil or used oil, which the fire marshal said this is the worst kind because the testing for used oil, um, because it can encapsulate so many different things, is quite pricey. So uh, what we did was we, we sealed it off the best we could. Um, we thought there was just the vent stack initially but as i had the the staff you know I, I said hey clean up around the vent stack let's resecure it and make sure that no rainwater gets in there because i don't know it could be an inch of oil and if we get any rainwater it's just going to bring all that oil out um but there are perforations along the top of the tank so where we uncovered it we you know used some pond foam and some sealant to just seal what was exposed and uh, we we're just waiting on a few more prices uh, to add some color to that, I would say there is a um, there is a fund that is in Illinois for these type of scenarios that all of the um, petroleum companies and stations uh, contribute to, so that when some of these things become discovered, that the municipality who is left holding the bag for this um, has to clean up could tap into. However, I am told that this tank <laughs> predates the eligibility for that fund. So that fund will, so the cost to remediate this and remove it, remove and remediate, will fall solely on the city. These tanks are pre-1974. Judging by the rivets on the vents, uh, the offices say my fire marshal assumes these are 1920 or older. So. I should add, um, I'm not sure if all the city council knows, um, but there are some monitoring wells that are located along and near Air Street because of um, bezanine that is uh, uh, suspended in the soil underneath of Air Street in the surrounding area. And that, um, that oil, uh, embedded oil that's floating in the soil is slowly ever so slowly moving to the south, uh, southwest, uh, as it good, works its way down the hill. Uh, so there are monitoring wells there, and all of that um, contamination was blamed to be on Grace uh, Oil, which is where the old um, um, food store or gas station there at Church Street and Division Street, the little, little corner mm -hmm. shop. Um, so it's believed that the, that oil is from the, from previous tanks when, you know, years ago that were at that site. However, given this new discovery, I wonder if these tanks may be contributing to that problem. Um, it's something that I, I think we'll end up investigating as we dive into this. Fortunately, the city's left holding the bag to clean this up. But we'll, we will our due diligence to do that so as uh, as we are a uh, city with a community water supply there's no risk to you know public wells or water service in the area and initial quotes have basically said that because we there is not a a, a delicate presence nearby and we are on a city supplied water supply that they are thinking it's just going to be merely a suck down clean out removal uh, removal of some fill and backfill, but unfortunately, because of what it is, you have to use a certified uh, state of Illinois tank. It's not retirer. It's not disabler. Um, removal. Yeah, it, it's a. It's got a fancy word. Remediation. Yeah, and uh, and the, you have to have a third party environmental standing by the entire removal. So that's where the cost comes in. That's all I have for good news. Yeah, there was, we passed an ordinance not too long ago that above and beyond our normal, you can't dig a well, 
in uh, you know in the city of Harvard. There was a special one we did for that area. You know, um, above and beyond what the other ordinance. It was just the, I guess the general ordinance for the right. for the right. for the city because of the contamination yes. or the possibility of a contamination. So we, can, can we pu uh, pump it out and store it? Um, um, I mean, we, just to get it. We can't. Out of we can't do anything with it because we're not licensed contractors. Um, and whatever we would pull out of there would be coating the inside of our sewer machine. And then, you know, our sewer machine, as good as that back door seal is, it's going to leak out and then we're going to have to dump it somewhere. Um, okay. It's it's best to just leave it undisturbed where it is for now and uh, let the let the contractors take care of it when when we can head that direction. We were just talking about some other topics. Well, yeah, business. my apologies. All right. yeah. um, so let's go back then to the, on the agenda. Is that right? We uh, now have quorum as of 682. We, yeah, we now have a quorum. Uh, sidewalk bond. Um, GW Properties, this committee was tasked with talking about what, what we might do, a discussion on how this might look if we do it and whether or not we should do it, I guess, to uh, have them put up a bond for the sidewalks that are required by current ordinance for the um, a Starbucks building that they're building on the corner of uh, McGuire and Division. So, can I ask, can I ask real quick um, when exactly did this sidewalk ordinance go? Uh, sidewalks were uh, required about um, around 2017 thereafter for all new bills. Okay, so so there wasn't one when Walgreens. No, there was not. Correct. There was okay. not. Was once, as far as we know, was one even considered when Walgreens went in? No, not when Walgreens went in. However, after the ending uh, of the TIF, or I should say, at the end of the TIF. There was additional, there was excess funding left in that TIF fund because that whole area there where the Dunkin' Donuts is being built, the Walgreens, and so that whole, there are several parcels there were part of this TIF. There was uh, approximately about 70K or so left over in that fund, and uh, I had asked City Council to consider utilizing that fund to build out a sidewalk on that parcel. Uh, along the perimeter of both airport and division. We did do some initial engineering uh, for that and discover there was going to be more than the 70K that w was in the fund, so the city would have to add additional funding to do it. And at that time, the city council decided not to pursue that project and refunded through the excess TIF funds to the associated taxing bodies. So Dunkin' Donuts doesn't have to put a sidewalk in either? Uh, I think Dunkin' Donuts, was, there was uh, consideration for that, but I don't know what actually happened with that. Well, I, I read the city council minutes, and I guess there was a discussion about it. Didn't uh, and our head engineer waive that for them because the state is... Because, because of the... Um, I mean, uh, we didn't have any knowledge of it. The, the, the um, was it RTA, what's the? RTA? RTA thing that's going to go through the sidewalk project. Yeah. They, they gave them a pass on it because they were definitely putting a sidewalk on that side of Division Street as part of, uh, and it will take care of half of uh, Walgreens as well because it goes all the way to Airport Road. So, um but it's on that side of the, you know, on the other side of the street, and they decided we don't need to put have them put in a sidewalk because we're going to be doing it as part of that project. That's in the plan for the the project. Right, but we only have a grant for the engineering at this point, right? No, no, it's I, well, yeah, but it it's there's a schedule that they're following. Yeah, it's a phased approach, and uh, it's um, it's it's going to be funded. 
um, you know, so because it's under the mayor, you know these things. These things so much better. Rob, do you have an idea? This when? is uh, it's CMAC money, right. and when when we submitted for it and they saw it come through, they were really excited, and uh, they they anticipate that the excitement will continue through the rest of the phases. You know, granted, we are years away from this, um, but. You know, they, they really like the project. They want to support the project wherever they can. And, you know, if we have to apply a little political pressure here and there to nudge it along, so be it. But the, the feeling initially was that this is this is a project they want to see and carry and help us out with. When we're talking years, are we talking 10 years? <sighs> Probably 5 to 10 because okay. we're doing a preliminary engineering now. You know, once we figure out what areas we need, then it's going to, you know, environmental and right-of-way purchasing. And then we're talking about, you know, probably permanent easement in some areas to put the sidewalk in. Um, so that's probably going to get costly. And then we're getting IDOT involved. So this is, it's going to be a project. Yeah. So Rob, you and I kind of briefly talked about this on the side about what if they just put in sidewalk, but they didn't put anything down to the road, no access points from the road. Right. What if we just required him to do that? I, I mean, that's, are, we, are they going to get approval from the state and from the county to do that? That would really depend on. So, if I can jump in mm -hmm. on this, yeah, So, um, there was some conversations that were going on with the county on this, and what will happen is uh, the county will require them to do. If the city were to uh, allow them to delay putting the the sidewalk in, or even not do the sidewalk at all. They still are required to put in all the the groundwork, everything else, as if the sidewalk was going in today. So they still have to do all of that construction anyway. So <clears throat> Brian Rosenboom, who was at the council meeting, couldn't be here tonight. Um, I've talked this over with Gary Rosadowski, our engineer. Talked it over with TJ with the options that are possible. And we can install, require them to install the sidewalks now with the construction of everything else. So this week, they submitted all their civil drawings and building plans for those standalone Starbucks without the Popeyes. Without the Popeyes, that's where they're struggling with making the numbers work. We can defer the sidewalk installation for a set number of years with the city holding the cash LOC. Uh, for the total cost of the sidewalk at prevailing wage and engineering plus permit fees, whatever those might be with IDOT and the county. And the uh, cash letter of credit to include an amount equal to 4% each year of the deferral to cover potential increase in construction costs for each year this is deferred. That's uh, what Administrator Leone came up with. That's option two. Option three is to allow construction on the site to start, uh, but at the same time wait while they uh, file permits with IDOT and McHenry County DOT for the sidewalk. So working in tandem, they're building while waiting for their approvals from IDOT. Uh, Gary did state uh, it is his opinion that dealing with both IDOT and McHenry County DOT will be a long, cumbersome process that the city shouldn't burden themselves with when they don't have to. So that's something we have to think about. if at the end of the deferral program, if that's the way the council goes, they don't have the sidewalks in and we have to do it. Um, do we want to take on that responsibility? Well, but then you have the fourth thing that we're not even talking about, the fact that the county is talking about putting a, a, a walking path through there as well. I, I, I should state that that project is funded from the county. They yeah. just have not moved forward with, right. uh, to run um, some type of trail. Uh, it's undefined what it exactly would look like, but it, obviously it would meet uh, all the specifications required that would run from essentially Rush Creek to Shadow Creek down McGuire Road across the intersection. On the, on the south side of the road, and correct? And down the airport road. Correct. That would most likely be asphalt, though. Five foot multi use path, five or six foot multi use path, which would be most likely asphalt. But if they did do that, they then would take on the responsibility to get the pedestrian crossing across IDOT, uh, uh, US 14 Division Street. I think once that infrastructure is in there, then it would be much easier for this developer to connect to it in front of their 
um, restore along uh, uh, IDOT's right of way. Is that a option that we could pursue? They would give us a letter of credit to do the, um, the sidewalk after that is installed from the corner uh, at McGuire and 14 to the east to the end of their property line, which would be O'Reilly's. Be an option. Gary said that it most likely would be possible to make that turn without having to do the aprons into the curb line there. Uh, so that is a possibility. It wasn't a guarantee, but he thinks, yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to do that. And he did state that McHenry County is doing a shared use path there along that side on the south side. It's probably why the county wants it to be pad ready, essentially, graded as such. So at the minimum, to, like you said, have at least enough funding to do Route 14. I don't know that McHenry County would pull out of that project or it would go away. But So a possible solution, I'm sorry, Mayor, um, no. is to go with the, the deferral option where they put money up front and then we see what ends up happening. And what does that timeline look like? Three years, five years, what would you feel comfortable with? I would say the best way to do it would be a, uh, a a time period subsequent to the county putting in their multi-use path. So, for instance, if it takes the county three years to put it in, you give them, I don't know, 24 months to add to it, to connect to it. That way, they don't really have to start their project until the county has completed theirs. So you, so you could add that contingency. Yeah, so you could do um, their project plus three. You know, 36 months, 24 months, something like that. What's the advantage? I'm trying to figure out what the advantage for them is. If they have to put all the money up front. I said the same thing. Yeah. Well, what? they're not waiting. Their their project's not delayed by waiting for the. Are waiting for IDOT Correct. approvals. And that's why I wanted to do an option also. You can start building while you apply for the permits in tandem with both, but. I, I, I don't have any issues with that. I mean, I, I you know, I, as an alderman and guy who just runs a business in town, I, I don't know the functionality behind any of this at all. And, and looking to you guys to say, here's, and I love the fact that you have options. Here's what we suggest. Um, because in the end, really, all, all I'm concerned about is in the end, five years from now, or whenever they're building it. It's their cost. It's not our cost. It was required, and we delayed it because, yeah, we want them to put their business in, and we don't want them to have to wait and be strapped down by it because we know what IDOT and the county for, you know, the bureaucracy is endless. Uh, we don't want them to be affected by that. We don't want to scare them away. We want them to build their business. But in the end, they're paying for it, and they're making sure it's getting in there at some point, five years from now, seven years from now. You know. And then obviously, if McHenry County is looking to put in, you know, why strap them with that? If McHenry County has actually funded that, they've got money set aside to do that part of it, maybe we simply say, okay, you do it in front of it on Route 14, you know, once they're done. You know, once they're done with that, and we have money aside for it to be done. Because obviously, McHenry County is not going to do it, and then... You know, we're going to, they're going to go back and change it. I mean, it's going to be one of the, you know, I mean. My recommendation would be to um, have them, you know, require them to build it after some period after the county has completed their project. It reduces their total cost of project that they have to do because they only have to do in front of 14. And it allows them to move forward with building the building and creating a business that generates revenue. And they will have generated revenue now to kind of supplement the cost of, of putting in that infrastructure after the county has completed theirs. So that would be my recommendation. The, the county would take care of, as part of their project, all the pedestrian. Well, it would be on them to create the pedestrian crossings across 14. That's where, uh, the where, where all the expense is going to be is the signal control, right? So that would place the onus on the county for their project, and then after the fact, they can come back and connect to it. But 
they also would the county also do the I guess it would be the piece of sidewalk that would be north off of the I don't I don't believe so. Just, just be the one going across. I believe the, the initial design is just to go across. Uh, informationally wise though is that uh, not only the project is funded but it keeps getting kicked down the path because of the condition of other prior condition and priority of other projects so right now they have you know the same problems we have uh, bridges failing infrastructure failing and you know it, it, it's funded but we don't know if something's gonna rob that funding you know this is uh, that becomes a political issue yeah. which is uh, a matter of just trying to get the priority set uh, politically and, yeah. and th that's a separate issue altogether yeah the key the key note here is that that project is going to happen at some point in the near future and uh, you know obviously we have a huge desire to bring another business in town that's going to invest in our community by building a building and creating a a, uh, um, a business that's not currently here so it, it would be in my um, sincere recommendation is to do whatever you can to enable them to get into business sooner and um, take advantage of what other projects are are coming so that they can move forward uh, once the county's done then you make them come back and, and connect to it I think that's the happy medium because they're not held up by getting the, the permits required from IDOT to be able to start building <coughs> and we get the best of both worlds <laughs> uh, the other thing with their submittal in reviewing it briefly is that they took out the ingress and egress on McGuire Road. So they'd have a right in, right out going into their property. They have a cross access agreement that's recorded with the county with o, the property owner to the south, O'Reilly's, uh, for to use go through their property to use their entrance as well. So they did receive a variance for a side yard setback. I think it was from McGuire and uh, to remove the bailout lane and reading through the minutes and all of that the it's still applicable the starbucks is on its own that property consists of three different parcels the starbucks is on its own parcel they want to maintain that variance to keep it on its parcel and make everything fit uh, the bailout lane isn't standard uh, for starbucks according to the minutes that i had read and the evidence that they provided so or, city attorney was um, comfortable with them not having to reappear before the planning zoning commission just because they took out that access off of mcguire but it will be uh, I, I don't think it's the best move but again it came down to numbers for them and if they get an end user for the rest of that property it could come into play later but right now just with one business it's the numbers aren't working for them so i just wanted to mention that when they start construction you'll notice it yeah well, we we approved that um single lane there's no no bailout lane correct. for that so correct that oh, Delgate, still, Delgate that's, doesn't have a bailout. that mean, still it, stands right i mean that's it does yeah. T, uh, tj the city attorney just said the hardship still has to be there for the variance to still be active let's say oh i see and okay. since it's on its own parcel it's not a standard feature of a starbucks facility if they were to and include a bailout lane it wouldn't fit on that parcel then it's still necessary to maintain that variance so their objective the property owners objective is to possibly put another business in there at some point what you're saying Stand on the other on the other parcel that what I'm sorry say that again the, the the property owners objective is to yes eventually build on that other parcel as well yeah they paid a lot of money for that land so yeah no I they, I get it they, they want to try and maximize it. Absolutely. sure absolutely yeah, so, so my my question is and going back to what Mike was saying um, we know this is funded by the county now here's what I my concern let's say five years from now the county says we're gonna we're we're dropping this project we're, we're not gonna move forward with simply because we cannot we have to take that money and we we and we defund the project which is very possible we can't we can't I, I my, my thing would be you know five years from now my suggestion would be five years from now that we revisit this or whoever is on this council obviously it won't be us or maybe it'll be some of us fine but revisit it and if that, that county project's not moving forward 
you know, then say, you know, he. Well, Alderman, you can certainly create the contingency that if the county project right. gets defunded, that they would re be responsible for sidewalk on the, uh, what is that, the north side of the, of the building. Right. And, along, I think the along Road. and I think the contingency should be that, that they're, we have a, they have a bond for this and that if it is built, we can refund the part of the bond that's not necessary and use only what's, they use what's left to build out what they have to build. But it should be bonded for the entire thing. We, we can assume, we can say, that, yes, the county's going to do this, but we don't know. Right. That, that stuff like this disappears all the time, and, and you know, you never know. That's, that's fair. So, so as far as putting money aside, that was the idea. And, and hearing about uh, they, you know, they could have a connecting uh, path, you assume the worst. Um, that they have to put the entire sidewalk in. Um, they're estimating it. So what I was proposing as far as putting money aside is we still got to get two estimates. The higher the two is the number that we use. You go the 4% building costs uh, is what's estimated per year. You say five years, so it's uh, say 100,000 plus 4% every time up to whatever five years would be. So what we would be asking is for, uh, I think the rough number came out to like $122,000 now that's held uh, and we, we don't have to do a bond we can actually put it in a restricted um, uh, account um, no different than some of our other restricted accounts so we can monitor ourselves uh, we save a lot of money as far as not having to do yeah, a bond sure, that way sure and then uh, the idea is if there is a, the, the general or the agreement or somewhere in the agreement stating that um, uh, should that path come in and um, we only need to say 60,000. Well, the 62,000 or whatever other interest is earned goes back to them. If it goes over that, well, here's a bill. I, Charlie, what are your thoughts, John? I like that. That sounds reasonable. Um, the, the requirement you mentioned, though, for uh, flattening the land and yeah, grading it, yeah. gra grading it and so on. Um, you say they have to do that anyway true as part of what as part of the county's uh requirement to get a permit to go uh, to cross into the uh right away if i remember right they yeah they said if the city is going to defer or waive the requirement for a sidewalk they the county would want it rated as such to right. for future they just uh, need path part of their site yeah, because right now it's a it's a so, ditch right, in the right, right away. Ditch, yeah. So they we that would be they would have to do that now. Correct. Correct. Okay. So it'll be flat. Yeah. And that as if the sidewalk. I went over was there, there and took some pictures and walked it, you know, just to see what we're getting into there, and um, it all goes underground towards the corner, and then it, it's just an open ditch on you know when you get past the, the corner with a grate you know on the end of a. Uh, tube there so they would have to extend that tube out I would assume you know farther towards uh, Walmart and then fill over it I, I guess would be the requirement there with some kind of hard pack of some kind that's a pretty deep ditch too yeah Gary or our engineers aware of what well the county emailed him about it reported it to us I believe is how it yeah. went so during his review, he's making note of that, making note of the cross-access agreement with O'Reilly's. I went outside. I went out there today and took some pictures of the ingress and egress on 14 for him, yeah. the curb lines and weeds growing and things like that. So um, he's going to note all of that in his first yeah. round of reviews. Okay, that's pretty flat on that side. I mean, it, it's it's not so bad. And even even if you had a terminated sidewalk there, you could have no trouble keep continuing on. So you know, so that's that's okay. But on the other side, though, on McGuire is where it it really goes down. You would, you know, you can agree. Yeah. So so if, oh, so, so what we would do is then write this up for the five year the bond as you described it, and then probably put something in there that to satisfy the county requirements they have to do the grading and. The only uh, stipulation I'd like to put on is more to pr help protect the city in this point is if, if this is the option that they can go ahead and start uh, construction, like okaying the permits for it, 
um, that the agreement has to be done and in place first before the permits can be issued. That kind of lights a little bit of a fire to, to get it done, otherwise they'll drag it out. Or there's a potential to drag it out and get their construction done and then we, we end up having to chase. Yeah, we could have the agreement ready to go by the next council meeting. <coughs> their engineer will submit to us their proposed cost for the sidewalks and for the bond. Gary will, <laughs> Gary will review it, say yes or no, this is what it should say, and then all of that will go into that agreement. So we are we aren't going to tie it in with any of this time frame. So what was that again? Uh, what the mayor was talking about, about tying it into a time frame that we would have in the county's mind on that. You could put an option in there um, that should they, the, the county say, all right, in three years from now we are going to do it, then um, you can leave a little verbiage, and TJ's pretty creative as far as writing these these sort of things, that it could be that once they've they've started construction plus X number of months. Muddle it up too much, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we'll try to keep it simple as well. Well, I mean. wait a minute. So, if they do the, if the if the county comes in and does their thing, um, and puts this the path down, uh, what would you, what would what what would be the requirement by the by the property owner? Well, if they if the county says that they uh, let's say they're going to have it done by end of summer. Yeah. Well, you really don't want to put sidewalk in, in in the winter time, so you give yourself a little bit of room because of weather or whatever else could happen to to have it. Finished. Well, those are all construction decisions. I mean, so you know that so that leaves the Div division street side, and we've got a bond for the whole thing, you know. And, yeah, you can. And what I'm saying is, you know, we, we can hold still hold that bond until they do the the division street side and then give them a refund for whatever's not used who's going to be doing the construction at the end they would they would have to do the construction it's their property we don't want to be doing it because then we have to pay prevailing wage right okay so then we would give them the whole bond back then well, we would give them no we would only give them they would submit invoices a proof of of cost but who are we paying if they're doing the work well no they if, Sorry. if if we get a bond to cover both sides and the county comes in and does their, they submit a, a request for a reduction in the letter of credit or bond. Gary would review that for that portion along McGuire okay, Road. Okay, so they would. They, okay, so they would. Um, they would do a refund for that portion of it, and then the rest of it would stand until they finish that. Okay. Okay. But that's good. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I, so I agree with you, Charlie. If if you're all okay with that, you, you'll need a. Motion to yeah. direct us that way. Yeah, well, let it sink. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're. I mean, I make that motion, whatever that is. I. <laughs> how's that? A motion to have the at attorney draft the necessary yes. agreement. Correct on what we've just been saying. Tape. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I. I think, you know, again, my only concern is that you know, five years from now, county has no direction on this whatsoever. You know, how much longer are you, are you pushing this? Are they have to provide us 4% for five years, or is it 4%? Maybe, maybe you add an additional contingency that if the county doesn't complete their project within five years, then they must do but, the entire project. So, you know, that would behoove the city to try and get the county to do their project within five years. But if it doesn't, you know, for whatever reason, the county keeps delaying, 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 well, then the onus is on the um, the developer to finish the project. Yeah, it might even put a fire under the developer to get the county to. It may very well. Yeah. Except yeah. except for the uh, yeah, but he would just do the sidewalk. He wouldn't mess around with signals or anything like that, right? Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't have that responsibility. He yeah. would just make sure he had ADA compliant sidewalk and be five done. feet, five feet wide. Right. That's only since it's not going to have any entrances or at that point won't have any access to the road. I mean that 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 you know again IDOT and the county that's when you get down to the road level that's going to be that's going to be that's the cost right there the signals and the accessing the road. And you know 
the corner of um, where McDonald's is. And uh, what is that? Hudson Frisco, Plaza. Frisco. Frisco Drive. Yeah, Frisco Drive. Um, they there's McDonald's had to put a sidewalk in, and it does terminate, you know, um, at that road. And they did put in an ADA ramp right to 14. No, it doesn't. It goes to Frisco. Yeah, across Frisco. Yeah, and um, you know because it's not an intersection to go across 14. Right, but it. it you know, they they were able to put in a sidewalk along there, and, and they were. But so the, the the difference between there and here is that it's abutting an intersection, uh, a multi intersection. So which has signalized versus Frisco is it, it's a side road that does not have a signal. So the signal creates a lot more complication and cost. So so I just em emphasize that in the motion, that yeah. the stipulation be that. <clears throat> Go ahead. Construction permits cannot be issued until the agreement is is signed and in place. I absolutely. That's my motion. I would go with that, or should we try to summarize everything in the motion that needs to be there? All right, <laughs> Lou, you'll be able to figure this out after the meeting. I, I've already. He's already written everything down. I've got the tape. Okay, good. Good Lord, because this is all over the place. Yeah. A second. Thank you, John. <laughs> All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. I, I, I do have a question. Why why are they do why is the why are they doing that on the north side of the road? Why is CMAP doing that on the north? Why aren't they doing it on the south side of the road? It would be easier because the true value has all that land right there that I mean, they're not having to do partial. It's I I believe that the reason that I mean, this this could have been a, a city decision uh, way back when, when this was submitted, but also because all the majority of the residences and the population is on the yeah. west side of the road. So, you know, it gives them a, a path of egress to get up and down the road. How they get across, that would be... Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, right. Wood, Woodstock had the same problem um, because, you know, there, for 47, there wasn't many pedestrian crossings on 47 and people would get hit. Yeah. Got it. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. So now that the easy topic is done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, the next thing on the agenda is to discuss long-term policy for sidewalks. And uh, Lou and I talked about this a little bit this afternoon. And um, I think what, we, what, what we're trying to do here is uh, come up with some kind of a next step to kind of get the ball rolling on this so that we can, we've been talking about sidewalks forever, at least as long as I've been around, which, wait a minute, that's not forever. But I've been, we've been talking about it for a, a long time about who has the responsibility for sidewalks um, and how do we uh, help, you know, get it, get them fixed. Um, we know kind of what's in the, in the ordinances about responsibility and so on, but it, we treat it as kind of a quasi um, uh, thing where the city has some responsibility and the landowner or property owner has some responsibility. And um, we just need to iron that out with a strong policy of where we want to go and so we can get these things uh, fixed. I'm I'm of the firm belief that you know like roads you know if you if you're thinking about moving to a town and you drive around the first thing you do is drive around and look at the place right and, and so on and if you see nothing but potholes and broken sidewalks and so on it's a, it really puts you off it makes you think well I think we'll look somewhere else and I just I just think that um, we can't there's hardly anything we can do that's more important for it to, than to make these. The streets look good and the and the sidewalks look good so it looks like an inviting place to either build a new house or move into an older home and restore it so um, we know for a fact that there are a lot of sidewalks out there that are dangerous I mean you know insurance companies should should be really interested in this kind of thing you know because um, they pay a lot of money when people um, trip and fall on raised edges and so on and broken broken sidewalks um, and we really haven't in, in have not enforced 
uh, those regulations and said, you got to fix your sidewalk. You have to do it. It's, it's out of compliance. We do have a complete list of the sidewalks that need repair. Uh, Ann's been working on that for a long time. And I think that we need to de decide what, you know, what kind of a program we can put together that will incentivize people to fix their own sidewalks and to also to um, also programs that will help them to, to pay for repair. Sidewalk. So, Alderman, the big question is who owns a sidewalk? Because the residents will tell you that the city owns the sidewalk. Yes. Well, that's the quasi part. Every, every town I've ever worked <laughs> in, sidewalks have been. But the it's counter safe. argument to that is when I built my home in this town, I paid for the sidewalk that went in front of my home. So, uh, any new builds today, you're required to have a sidewalk. That sidewalk is paid for by the purchaser of that home. So for all new builds, um, what you're suggesting, um, when the city pays for sidewalks solely on the city, is that those who had to pay for their own sidewalk are subsidizing all those others that don't have to pay for their sidewalk. And that's not fair. It's not fair. Uh, everybody should have some skin in this game. Fair enough, but then there are areas. There are areas where there are no sidewalks today at existing homes, and those residents believe the city should put the sidewalk in. So, the answer first off is you need to determine who is responsible for the sidewalk. Is it the city or is it the resident? If it's the city, why do we require new builds to build a sidewalk and that resident pay for those sidewalks? If it's the resident. And why aren't we requiring residents who don't have sidewalks to put in sidewalks or have Ill, um, sidewalks in disrepair to repair those sidewalks? That's the conundrum that you're in. Um, good luck. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> you know, Mayor, you you also bought your street. That is true. And uh, so you you got to. I mean, I'm not sure how far you can take that argument. Well, it, fair enough, but I, you know, because you didn't pay for it, the developer paid for it, and then he sold you a house. Yes, that contains those things. That's true, but <laughs> I will tell you that they didn't put in the side. They don't put sidewalks in until you build a, a house on that particular lot, and well, the how and yeah. the price of that home obviously includes the cost to install that sidewalk. For clarification purposes as well, a <clears throat> um, couple of the places I've dealt with before, the new construction. So when you build a house, the, the 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 completion of the sidewalk is on the property owner, and after the building is complete, the municipality accepts that sidewalk and the maintenance thereof, but only after it's built by the resident. <laughs> Where's this? Um, because this is built on a, you know, the sidewalks are built on public right of way. Generally speaking, part of the development is you must put the sidewalk in as 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 by city ordinance, and then after that, the replacement, repair, or maintenance of the sidewalk falls on the. It's it's like your driveway. It's yeah. Like the, the apron of your driveway that's on city right of way, but you're paying for that apron. Same thing with the sidewalk. Now the apron now. Right. This and also, I mean, once again, I've, I've worked on jobs in town where they were redoing this, the road, and they'll redo the friggin' driveway up to the sidewalk as part of the uh, construction of the road. Um, so the town's looking at it different ways. Now, yeah. personally, I, I, I redid my driveway, and I took care of it myself. So I, I didn't think I could come to the city for well, you could have, but it probably had been denied. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to do anything for coming to the city. Right. Correct. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Correct. So, In, I, you know, I think at the end of the day, before you make any decisions, you need to decide who is responsible for paying, and if it's a city or is it partially the city and the resident. I mean, there's a hundred ways to skin that cat, right? Yeah. So, in our in our current ordinance, under exterior maintenance of the building ordinance, sidewalks and driveways, all sidewalks, walkways, stairs, driveways, parking spaces, and similar areas shall be kept in a proper state of repair and maintained free from hazardous conditions. For purposes of the subject sub subsection, hazardous conditions shall include but not be limited to gravel driveways and potholes deeper than six inches and four inches wider than four inches. 
That's in our building department. And and that's on the homeowner, right? This is this is what it's is exterior maintenance. All yeah. sidewalks shall be kept in a proper state of repair and maintained free from hazardous conditions. That's sidewalks. That's that's, that's the way I thought it was. It, 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 that it is the homeowner's responsibility. Um, but how many how many feet of sidewalk have we replaced over the last four or five years? I know. No, but, but, and, but see, and a lot of that is. But that's the confusing part of it. Yeah. You know, I, and the example I use, and I, um, I use Lisa as an example. Okay, let's say <laughs> let's say that, you know, uh, she's not here, so you can beat her up. That's right. <laughs> let's, I mean, I know she just got a new sidewalk. Compliments of the city. That's what I, I you know, and not there's there's anything wrong with that, but 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 what I'm saying, <laughs> but what I'm saying is is that. If I fix my sidewalk, you know, or or if, if Ann came to my house and said, your your sidewalk is falling apart, you need to fix it. Meanwhile, they're put the city's putting in a sidewalk for Lisa. That doesn't seem. I mean, that's doesn't seem right either. You see what I mean? So, you're right. We have done that, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but we need something more consistent so that you, how can you enforce that code? When you're doing it for free for us, for some people, right? So you need to draw a line in the sand and determine what your policy is going to right. be going that, forward. That's, that's this is the beginning of that, and um, it seems to me that there are some things we can do. Right now, we put in, for example, I think a hundred thousand dollars a year towards some kind of sidewalk program, and um, you know, maybe. And this is what Lou and I talked about, you know, an SSA or uh, a revolving loan program of some kind that where we could uh, help the homeowners uh, get through that. And we could, instead of putting the money into sidewalks, we, would, we could put that money uh, into um, this, this project, you know, a, a uh, you know, where we would have money that we could bar, lend to homeowners at a very low interest or no interest to um, to do their sidewalks, and a hundred thousand dollars I know is not a lot of money by any stretch, um, but you can get a lot. You know, you can, you, you can get a, several houses out of that. Um, you know, and you, and you're not really losing the money. They're gonna pay, they're gonna they're gonna pay it back. So that could grow year after year. You know, it's a hundred thousand, and then you start getting some of it back. Plus, you next year you put another hundred thousand in, and it, and it would gain momentum over you time. Get, it gains momentum over time. So, but it seems like something, and then you could have a consistent program. Can I pose another question that may muddy the water? <laughs> sure. Um, is this only applicable to residents, or is it also applicable to businesses? Well, and if it's applicable to businesses, does that mean our sidewalk project by the post office falls on that business? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's a very definite. Well, I, yeah. I, I, you know, like the federal government to step up and pay for that. Because it's a bit of a, a muddy uh, situation or uh, topic. Um, what staff can do is is kind of look at some options. Um, to kind of answer some of the questions that already have come out and uh, try to present at a later committee uh, meeting. Just to, again, give you some options or, or maybe help. But yeah, I'd like to know what other communities have done. And I, and I think, because I think this is, I don't think this is solved in one meeting. But I think, no, I don't I, think so But either. I think we need, to, we, need, we need to decide where this goes. And, and so this is, by the end of the year, we have a clear direction for going forward i don't think this is i think this is a multiple meeting yeah because yeah. this is a really tricky the funds that we were doing for the sidewalks deb mentioned that wasn't coming out of the motor fuel tax she was pulling out of somewhere else general fund yeah out of general fund why was she doing that why not because, motor fuel tax? um we were using motor fuel tax for roads and so yeah. um it could have been used for right. sidewalks but you know at the time the committee wanted to do sidewalks and roads and so we utilize mft for roads and well i but i know when we first start talking about it, we've said okay we've, we're giving we're getting example three hundred fifty thousand in motor fuel tax this year 
we're going to take 250 from motor fuel tax for the roads and 100,000 for, I mean, I remember that in the committee talking about that. Then all of a sudden it changed, and I don't remember any of us being told that that changed. It just changed. And it was, we're pulling money out of the general fund to pay for sidewalks. And then we're full, the full amount. And, and don't get me wrong, I think that our roads are a huge issue. And, and if I was a, being a constituent of the town, I would much rather, you know, spend all that money and do as much as we can with the roads but figure out another way to deal with the, with the sidewalks well, because we need as much as the, we can. The potential is to put the ownership uh, on the resident to fix the sidewalks. Well, uh, uh, yeah, but this is also the poorest community in, in the county and, it was in stone, though. I mean, uh, what I'm saying is we could build a fund. Now, yeah, right. I agree with you, Charlie. Yeah. That, that can come from anywhere in well, the I got budget, some suggestions. Right? I mean, you can yeah. say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put, yeah. we can set up an account for that and say this, we're going to put this much into this, into this, you know, account for uh, sidewalk loans. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be from the motor fuel tax. It can be from anywhere, right? I'm, but I'm just saying that. That, that's the example I used simply because we did have a hundred thousand dollars dedicated to uh, to that from the motor fuel tax originally right you know we were doing a you know um, I think yeah I think it was three hundred and eighty thousand total or something like that and then we ripped off ninety something for sidewalks and right yeah but I I think that uh, uh, the, the idea of building that kind of a fund and, and, and putting that program together um, might work. And then you can go to those those homeowners and say, look, you this is dangerous. You know, you could get sued. Uh, your insurance company won't be happy. Uh, and, you know, we need to fix these sidewalks up. As far as uh, people who don't have sidewalks, well, then I think the city does probably have some responsibility, you know. We I know. Mean, know how many residents how much of our residents don't have sidewalks? yes we do i don't have a number but i know ann knows it yeah and I, that and that has been mapped out so we just i just don't <clears> know what the number is and, and i don't want to, to to borrow a term from the mayor i don't want to muddy the water even further but um <laughs> well in it in go a, ahead. uh so there was a sidewalk program in marengo and you could apply for funding to get the sidewalk repaired However, when you got the sin, I don't know, the, we'd have to talk to TJ on this or maybe one of the, one of the two you know. Um, as soon as the city got involved with city funds, you had to use prevailing wage. Yes. yes. And I would get people coming in and going, I want to get my sidewalk replaced. And it was like, oh, okay, well, you have to get another quote of prevailing wage. And they'd come back and they'd go, well, it's more expensive to do it with you guys. I'm like, uh, yeah. You know, I, I'm sorry about that. This is what we have to offer. And they would just be frustrated. It was like, well, it's cheaper to just have, you know, Bob's Concrete do this on the side or, you know, whoever, because they're not paying prevailing wage. It's just, you know, a guy in a truck. So so that's where uh, having them do a loan so they can uh, contract whoever to do it. And then uh, as far as uh, where, like, one possible source is that 1%. Now, not a great amount. Uh, yeah, not, I no, knew that no. was going to start. I just was going <laughs> to say that is a possibility. No. So if the if the if the homeowner borrowed the money from the city and took on the project privately, then I think then they can hire their own contractor. That that could be. And and then they pay for it, and we reimburse. That them. could be a way around it. Possibly. Uh, but but you know to, we would need to check with our attorneys to ensure that we are following the, the one. The we'd have to go through the right, the and, and there process. is. There is a community out there. Uh, it's either Norridge or Naperville that the citizens can borrow the money, or sorry, they can put in the the sidewalk, do the repairs, and then submit the uh, complete or canceled checks for reimbursement. So the work is being done. They they've done all the contracting and everything else. They just get reimbursed for. And, and I think Norridge did 100%, um, and Naperville did a uh, 60/40. And the way I think you could do that is there's, when they obtain their permit to get it done, the contractor has to meet the city's building requirements. Right. And in so doing, then the city 
can say, well, this is totally 100% reimbursable. Right. Um, and that gives the contractor the affirmation that he's going to get paid. Yes. As long as he meets the criteria. Yeah. I, I was going to say, you're right about the prevailing wage. And I think we went through that when we had our, we had a 50-50 yeah. deal once. And then we, and I think we still have one on the books. It's 66 and a half. or something like that. Yeah. And, yes, but and it's unfunded. Yeah. It's unfunded, but we do, we do have it, and and it does require that it be used a city approved contractor. We went one step further. It was you know, it wasn't just prevailing wage. You had to hire you know use the city approved contractor. But what I'm thinking is is that if what if I remember right when I did it, you know I, I actually used that program, and when I did it, I know when I, I checked around. The guy had a, a, a contract with the city. He got all the sidewalks. That's not a bad deal for some people, especially small businesses, to do that. His prices weren't that that bad. You know, he was paying his people prevailing wage, mm-hmm. but because he was doing so many sidewalks, his prices were right in line with anybody else that you would try to get to. Because he had he had a, a captured audience. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, it can work. I mean, and and I think that having some sort of a resident buy-in program. I just had this conversation earlier this week or late last week. New residents to the city, and they called. They called out and they said, "Hey, can you take a look at our sidewalk? We got a couple questions." And they had removed their carriage walk, and they said, "You know, we'd like to find out about getting this replaced and continuing it because their lot was adjacent to a lot that didn't have it." And I, you know, I told them, I said, "I real honest." with you, your sidewalk anywhere else would make somebody very happy. And I can't prioritize replacement of this sidewalk over areas that either, you know, there's, you know, bike jumps and lips and stuff. I'm like, it, it, this is, you have, you know, you have some of the, the better sidewalk and, you know, just to be honest, you know, I, I don't want to provide any false expectation, you know, certainly, um, you know, maybe down the road there's something, but right now, you know, we wouldn't be able to prioritize it. So to, just, again, just to help out, uh, what you can do is direct staff to do some research, check on the legalities, and present uh, at a later committee meeting. Yeah, I, I make a motion to do that. I mean, we, we go round and round all night long. It yeah. doesn't make any sense because we need more information in front of us. We need to know because there are other communities do this. We just need to get that information in front of us and, and find the best practice for us. And we need to look at communities that, I mean, I love you bringing up Naperville, but holy crap. My brother lives in Naperville. It's the number one city and rated city in the U.S. They have so much money coming in there. You know, Nike, hey, we're going to go in and build you pickleball courts because we're at a pickleball tournament. You and know? Remember, though, at one point, Naperville was one of the worst towns. To well, it's, it's true. It's true. I mean, but, but what I'm saying is, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, hard to compare to Naperville. I wish. I wish we had the funds. No, I don't believe you need a motion. It's no, just okay. yeah. directing staff. Yeah. Sure. And I, uh, Charlie, are you okay yeah. with that? Yeah, yes, I am. Okay. And we can, like, take this up whenever they're ready at the next meeting. Yeah. We can set a time for it. Yeah. We'll put it in the check with Lou, see how we're doing yeah. in rotation. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good, because it seems like there is an interest in, in going forward with this and getting um, getting a handle on it. So that's that's what I was after for tonight. Uh, parking on Sage Lane. So we had a, a request, um, for, or we've heard some complaints from some citizens that live on Sage. Um, they're asking for uh, the city to look into doing a no parking along uh, both uh, the east and west side. What's happening is it's already kind of narrow to begin with, and then people are parking like either here or here, and it's making hard for traffic. Uh, regular uh, uh, traffic to get through also makes it difficult for like the police or ambulance or, or anything to get through there. What we're saying is, you know, why are people asking, parking there? There's nothing there. Well, they they do, and then um, uh, part of the is I think there's a school pick bus stop. There. There's a school pickup here, so all the parents park here, drop off their kids or so pick up their kids. We're just asking to make it uh, no parking. Or when there's a parking lot right here that they could right, utilize, right. but. So, it's for much easier. It's also a lot, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what um, what was asked um, the city staff if we could present in front of the committee uh, to make it no parking 
uh, the length of the island. Yeah, I make that motion. It's, it's simple. Park somewhere else. I, I get like, it. I mean, parents are going to probably lose their... Both islands? Both islands. Both islands, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I, I second. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. This is like Galvin. When we did Galvin, yeah. it's the same kind of thing. It is. Um, before you get to the next topic, uh, number seven, I, there is a typo in the agenda. It says Alderwoman uh, Luna's request. It's supposed to be just Rosa Luna's request uh, because she's speaking as a citizen, not as an elected official. Uh, Rob, can you bring the microphone over? Oh, yeah. Can you guys see me? <laughs> Please introduce yourself. Uh, Rosa Luna, 519 Driftwood Lane, Harvard, Illinois. Um, I would like to humbly ask this committee, as a citizen of Harvard, to consider my petition for a street to be named after my father, Vicente Garza. My family came to Harvard, Illinois, almost 50 years ago. We woke up on the outskirts of this town on June 1st, 1974. My family resided at a sat farmhouse off of Route 23. My father was a hardworking man. He migrated back and forth for 15 years. He decided one day that he wanted his family with him, but he was opposed to his children going from school to school. We were the second Spanish family to permanently reside in this town. Like any other resident, he paid his dues. I would be very grateful if this petition would be honored in his name. Thank you. Uh, which street are you asking for? Um, I didn't really um, look at any streets. Just I would, we would be just grateful to have a street in Harvard named after him. We don't have a, any specific one. What are the logistics of that for residents or, or businesses that have a uh, current address on that street? Is it like an honorary thing so it doesn't, it's not a real address change? Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, be, I don't want to make inconvenience for anyone. So because I'm not I, sure, I, is the question to change a street to the name or is it to, when a new street is created to make it that name? Or are you looking for an honorary naming? So, explain to me what what do you mean by an honorary? Would it so be? an honorary uh, name street retains its true name for mailing and addressing purposes, but the street name would also have an additional sign saying honorary, you know, uh, the na the new name. So, like for example, let's just say McKinley. Okay, it is still remain McKinley, but underneath it's honorary Garza. Way or Garza Drive. Actually, it'd be, yeah, it, it would do that, and, and they typically do it more for on streets that are numbered. Right. Um, so, third street, yeah, I was just third, third street name. honorary Garza Drive, something like that. Yeah. Then there's less it's, confusion. It's, more, it's <laughs> correct. It's seamless. Yeah. Yeah, because because absolutely have. I think I think it's important that we do honor. Individuals that have committed, you know, have, have been in the community, and I have no issues I, with this at all, other than I do not want it to affect, like, if my home address changed, I would obviously be upset, and now I have to deal with all the mailing changes and everything like that. Um, so either it, it would be a new street, or I think best to be honorary, an honorary street, and, you know, like John said, pick a number street and do it that way. Don't, don't we have some streets that don't have um, houses on them yet, but are are ready to soon? Yes, but all those streets are named. Yeah, I know, but those you, you change and nobody care. It's my that, that's a possibility, but I think that falls into um, post office. I think there's additional issues of changing the name of the street. I, I'm not aware of all those. Maybe Rob has some. If, if I could provide a suggestion. <clears throat> um, 
this this took place in Woodstock. Woodstock is renamed uh, Main Street in Woodstock is renamed Honorary Brian Sager Way with a big thing over the top. But maybe there's a, a middle of the road option where uh, maybe not a residence street, but maybe like the entryway into Milky Way Park or a similar area where you know it's the entrance to Milky Way Park, but it would be also you know honorable cars away if it would be all right with the petitioner citizen citizen Rose, i'm sorry did your father pass away did your did your father pass away and i missed that i apologize i'm so sorry no it's fine yeah. So, what's your pleasure? Is that your, rec your recommendation, Rob, would be like Milky Way or maybe... Um... Are we talking from the entrance, um, was it Blackman, or are we talking about the entrance out on? So the entrance from Blackman, that street actually does have a name. I think it's Campbell Street. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, from Ratzlaw, from that Ratzlaw. Ratzlaw. That's right. I think that works best. That would be my motion on the honorary naming of that entranceway in the Milky Way Park. I'm good with that. It would also be a high traffic area. Mm. A second. John? Yeah? yeah. Motion? You go with that, Laura? Thank you. That? Jay made a motion, John second. Oh, he already did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor then? <laughs> Aye. You yes. Watch. You're welcome. Yeah. So, and that's a recommendation to the city oh, council. Terry. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're not having to be for a new business here, Charlie, but I, I did have something I wanted to ask Rob. Yeah, I was, yeah, go ahead. Harrison Street over by the school, what's, there's water on that road continually for the past week. Do we know what's going on? Uh, from the, on Route 14? Yes. There is, we had it tested today for... Uh, presence of you know water treatment chemicals and Jim said the result came back negative you know or, or minimal to the point where he would doesn't believe it is city water so I believe it's a groundwater issue um, there <laughs> has been a there has been a sump pump that's been discharging into that general area um, from Harrison uh, for some time uh, tomorrow weather depending we you know I was planning to have the the staff um, pump that out and see if we can identify where it's coming from uh, that particular sanitary manhole, um, sanitary access hole, was abandoned um, quite some time ago. All the sanitary laterals are running underneath of Route 14 and on the west side of the road. So essentially there's uh, three or four structures that are just sitting there vacant. <clears throat> so that's one of those structures. It's the, the northernmost structure. So hmm, Wow. We, we've had... I think the last time I saw it was like something like six inches of rain in 15 days and there's standing water everywhere. So it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me, but it, like most of the people that have noticed it initially, it was, Oh, well that'll stop. And then it just keeps going and going, but because it didn't pre test pre uh, positive for presence of treatment chemicals, um, either they're getting filtered out somewhere and we have a leak way down the way, but we do plan to pump it down and take a look. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other new business? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I apologize. I hurt my back. I took a muscle relaxer. I fell asleep on the couch and completely forgot. And Kelly's like, hey, someone said you're missing a meeting. I'm like,